The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable recent programs. And welcome back to Park Place Lanes here in Windham, New Hampshire, and to Stars and Strikes Doubles for a Sunday afternoon. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and uh, we're starting series number two right now with uh, last week a couple of the guys moving into the uh, Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions, Gary Carrington and Jack Ray, if you missed it, with a huge 448 to uh, open things up. Yeah, fantastic score, and, and we got an interesting ladder this week. Uh, uh, this the next few weeks with some bowlers that have never been with us before and uh, always interested in seeing them match up with the team and see how they uh, communicate with each other as far as the strategy which we'll go into later on in the show. All right and of course prize money at stake as always and uh, in three weeks time we will be uh, moving another team into the Stars and Strikes doubles tournament of champions and uh, all those guys will be shooting at that 448 put up last week by Gary Carrington and Jack Ray. Well without further delay let's uh, let you meet the bowlers for this first show and we'll take a look at the ladder after our first break and bring you up to date on who will be coming in the weeks ahead. But first of all, our first team, the number five seated team, Bob Buxton and Reggie DeLine. Okay, on your left, Bob Buxton from Merrimack, uh, Massachusetts, carries an average of 125. His roll-off score was 671. And his partner, Reggie DeLine from Needham, Massachusetts, 125 average also, and his roll-off score 670. And, of course, uh, Reggie DeLime was here in our first Stars and Strikes doubles series just a few weeks back. So he'll be taking another crack at it today with a new partner. And they will face a new team, our fourth-place team, Bob Mazur and Phil Clough. Okay, and Bob's been with us before from Dover, New Hampshire. Average 122, roll-off score 674, and a newcomer, and probably should give him a few pins because he's, <laughs> he came a day and a half ago. And uh, from Warren, Massachusetts, way out in the western part of Massachusetts, average 114, and his roll-off score 668. All right, and of course we've got three more teams ahead of these guys, and we'll familiarize you with those names after we take our first break. The uh, prize money at stake, of course. The winner of this show moves on to face our number three-seeded team next week. We've got three strings of Scotch doubles bowling coming up on Stars and Strikes Doubles, and we will get it started right after we take these messages. Don't go away. All right, as promised, here is a look at what is coming up in the weeks ahead. You'll notice that there is a tie for the number two spot, Owen Martin and John Mafio, as well as Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc, deadlocked at 1343, their combined roll-off scores. Even as we speak, Dan Murphy, that tie is being broken. In fact, uh, hopefully we will have the results of that one-string roll-off at the end of the show, and we'll be able to uh, fill you in on the rest of the ladder because, uh, of course, the loser of that one-string roll-off will be next week's opponents for the winner of this show today. And then in the number one spot, safely there, three weeks from today to come in and try and defend that spot, Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn, a couple of guys who have uh, never been here before here on Stars and Strikes. So... We look forward to that, and right now we look forward to Reggie DeLine getting us started this week here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Incredible how close those scores were. Mm. 12 pins separating top to bottom, but only a couple pins separating second to fifth. Second to fourth, I should say. I think it a 10 for Reggie. Reggie DeLine, as I alluded to earlier, was... Uh, here for a couple of weeks in our first series on Stars and Strikes doubles, teaming up with Pat Pay. The team knocked off Joe Ashline and Dave Richards in their first week and then were defeated by Don Weatherby and John Mafio in the second week. And yes, that's the John Mafio that's coming back uh, in this series as well. A spare up in the second for Reggie DeLine. And Ten an spare to start. An excellent spare it was. Had the 7-10, was able to play both pieces of wood, one to take the 7, one to take the 10. So that always helps getting that first mark up. Bob Mazur now. And Bob takes them all. Talk about getting rid of the jitters right away. Well, there you go. Everything but the four pin, and then get some wood coming from right to left. And here it comes to take out that four pin. Interesting style. Bob is right next to the ball return. Light hit this time. Well, will that eight pin go? The seven pin is down. That one is just standing there in the channel. That's considered down. He's got the eight and the ten left, and well, he's going to have to go after the cap of that wood. That's the only shot he has. And 
So nine fell on the strike. You heard it from the crowd, nice try, and it was. Was able to get the eight pin out of there, but nothing came close to knocking the 10 down. And now, our first look at Bob Buxton. Seven, nine, and 10. And that was the fill, of course, on the spare left by Reggie DeLine. A lot of wood down there, but not much of it was any help to Bob Buxton on that shot. Lays himself the seven and the 10. Nice 10. We'll take another crack at that one. That time the wood did help, but unfortunately on the spare shot, it wasn't much help. That looks like a good ball, and it was everything but the nine. Now that wood has straightened out, but as you can see, it's a long way in front of the nine pin, and he can get by it, but it's gonna be a very fine shot. If he hits it, the ball is gonna to fly too. Let's see what happens. Got wow. it. Actually, the wood clipped the nine pin, just touching it as it went by. Watch, watch the ball first. No chance the ball was gonna fly over it, but the wood clips the nine for the spare. First look at Phil Clough. First time Phil's been with us here on Stars and Strikes. It's from my neck of the woods <laughs> many, 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 many years ago, Western Massachusetts. And a big spare for Phil in his first box here. Uh, here's a fellow, the cluster five in the corner. Uh, and the opening of the show, I mentioned his average at a 114. Now, I'll tell you something. This guy bowls a lot better than a 114 average when he gets in <laughs> tournaments and roll-offs. So a lot of times, that, that average is deceiving. Make it two in a row for Phil Clough. Back-to-back -back spares. The team of Mazur and Clough with three marks in the first four boxes. And Reggie DeLine will fill a spare in the fourth. Time through the middle, it looks like it's gonna be five. Well, Reggie, a little body English there. He was close and he knew it. Almost cut the three pin. He'll take a nine. 61 half for the team of DeLine and Buxton. Ooh. <laughs> Just caught it. Well team of Buxton and DeLine liking lane 31 so far. They've got three marks over on that side. Bob Mazur now filling the mark left by his teammate, and they're still moving. Watch out. It'll be an eight fill. Nice spare for Bob Mazur. That's three in a row for the team. We'll take another look. Just a very gentle shot as he was able to lift the two pin up over to the 10. And a nine drop. Well, these two teams going at it early in the match. Especially uh, Bob Mays. He's gonna take a real close look at that. They have well, he's in his sixth frame. They already have five marks. Spare in the sixth, four in a row for the team. Well, I was assuming he was gonna make that one. For the <laughs> <mark>. <laughs> I think that was a fair assumption. Working on a spare, Bob Buxton. 
And oh, Bob, wow. big hammer strike on the spare left by Reggie DeLine. No doubt about that one in the one three pocket. Watch the ball spinning and last minute starts the break, catches the head pin right three quarters. Ten, uh, seven pin, last one to go. Not another one. Almost a carbon copy of the last ball. This time only a nine pin drop. He leaves himself the two pin. And he covers for three in a row. One eleven through eight. Phil Clough will work on a spare. Team has four in a row, four marks in a row. And they'll leave eight on this one. And seven and ten. Apologize to the people at home with my voice. I don't know if my voice is changing or I have a cold. <laughs> oh, great shot by Phil Clough. He had to wait for the ball to come back, but it eventually carried for the spare. I mentioned this is a TV call too. They last weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But only on Sundays. That's right. <laughs> Seven on the fill. That was a great shot by Phil. His only hope was to hit the wood and have some help from someplace. And the ball came carrying over to clear the seven pin out. And he's thrown nothing but marks wow. here on boy, oh boy. Stars and Strikes doubles. What a debut. <laughs> that is six marks in a row for the team. They've only left one open frame. And Reggie DeLine is coming up now for his final two. He on lane 32, last two times, pretty heavy on the head pin. Leaves himself the 3 6, 4 7. He's going to go after the 3 6, I'm sure. Oh, yes. my. Oh, I mentioned oh my. the last time he had the three pin up, he used a little body angle. She thought he might have cut it over. This time, he does catch the three. And actually into the wood, which was between the four and the seven. What a great shot that was. Well, a little hop, skip, and a jump, oh, and a strike. Boy. Boy, I'll tell you, we've mentioned before how the double scores tend to be a little lower, but that's certainly not true in this first <laughs> game today. Wow. Each Strike in the 10th. Each team just trying to survive the storm that the other one's putting up on a scoreboard. Oh, oh, and a double. double. Strike. A double strike in the 10th, and he will get another ball. Mercy. That's 157. <laughs> Plus a ball. Can, can you imagine if these strikes were up in the game a little farther? Doesn't get the full benefit of the double strike because it's in the last frame. Is it a triple? No, it's an eight drop, but it's a 165 for the team of Buxton and DeLine. What a terrific first game. Boy, they're picking right up where Carrington and Ray left off last week. Whoa! Strike by Bob Mazur. That Not is the seventh mark in a row for the team. <laughs> Not to be denied. Here we see the replay of that one in the 1-3 pocket. Just trying to stay with them and... <laughs> 165 is not going to be enough to lead this match after one game, I don't think. Well, we're going to be awfully close. Well, much, much closer than you would hope to be if you're throwing a 165. That's right. <laughs> a nine, finally an open box for the team and they take the lead by two. How about that? 167 to 165. The difference is just two after the opening game. We'll be back, we'll cool things off and come back in a minute. Phil Clough is all set to uh, get us started now in game two. What a first game we had. Unbelievable. Hope you didn't tune in late. Because this fellow hasn't had an open frame yet, has he? No, he hasn't. He's four for four. Four spares. Make it five for five. That is nine marks for the team of Mazer and Clough. First open for Phil. What a bum, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Phil Clough finally misses. <laughs> 23 after two. If you just tuned in, you missed a great opening game. 167, 165. Bob Mazur, Phil Clough leading by two. Bob Buxton now, watch out. That 10 pin will stay. And that piece of wood is legal. And it's in a dangerous spot. I think he's probably going to try to get by that piece of wood. Well, let's see where the second piece comes in. That's tempting also. I'd go right at the pin. Ooh, capped the wood and drove it right by. I believe he's trying to get by it. Just pulled a little bit to the left. And it's a 10 box. Four horsemen left. That would be the one, two, four, and seven. Going to be in the outside. Yes. Well, oh, the team of Buxton and DeLine stays perfect on lane 31. They've marked every time. And of course, Reggie DeLine's double strike came on lane 31 also. So it's no doubt they'd like to bowl the rest of the match on lane 31. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 boys. Bob Mazur. Oh, half Worcester left, and then he goes through the middle. Still looking at five pins. Three, six, ten on the right with the four, seven on the left. Trying to bail out with an eight or a nine. Make it a nine. Bob Mazur from Dover, New Hampshire. Works at Visions Beauty Supply, does most of his bowling at the Bowl Away in Rochester, New Hampshire. And he's left to the head pin. And he'll take a shot at the four horsemen right side. Just missing the head pin. Couple of nine boxes for Bob. That's the first time in this match that a bowler has gone up and thrown two open frames. And with this fill, Reggie could take the lead. Anything over five. That's over five. <laughs> nine fill on the spare. And it looks like the wood is good. I think he's just gonna plow right into the wood. Yep. Not a bad choice there. I'd rather shoot at something that's uh, about a foot long than something that's two inches wide. Phil on the spare for Reg on his favorite lane, or their favorite lane. Yeah, they could be looking at their first open here over on 31, unless Reggie converts this. Let's see. Oh, oh. why even mention it? <laughs> it's an automatic. Wow. Great shot. We will take a break. After that terrific shot, three marks in a row for the team of Buxton and DeLine. They have taken the lead. We're almost at the halfway point. Stars and Strikes doubles continues after this. Phil Clough, box number five, game two. The team of Mazer and Clough has slipped behind here in the early frames of game two. Oh, Phil Clough has him moving. He'll leave the eight pin. A couple of pieces of wood, one on either side of that eight pin. I would say it should be too much of a problem. It isn't. The 10th mark for the team. 10 in 15 boxes, not bad. But that's one fewer than Buxton and the line have. <laughs> Kind of hung out to the right. Let's see. He's going to get half a dozen. No, make it five. And he'll shoot at the four horsemen left and the nine pin. Yes. yes. Fine shot. 
Well, Phil Clough had that one open frame in the second, but other than that, he is perfect on the day with marks. And that was a nice shot. Well, Bob Buxman try to keep their streak going at three spears in a row so far the second game. Off target to the left, and Joe Paglia will get his first workout of the day. Segan is going to go down and check out that piece of wood that has stopped just to the right of the head pin. See if that is legal or not. My guess is it isn't. I think your guess is right. Yep, he's right on top of it. And that will be taken out. So I'm not sure how much easier it makes the shot. It might have been even better if, if it hadn't uh, stayed. But uh, <laughs> Joe was making that exciting. <laughs> Uh, the one, eight, and ten. Having the wood there might have helped, but. And we'll make it a nine. 70 through five. And it's a 12 pin advantage for Buxton and the line. 14 pin advantage this game. 12 overall. Right through the center for the spread eagle. Now that one broke a little sharper at the end on Bob than has throughout the match. A little more lift on the ball. Broke sharp and right through the middle, spread eagle. Oh. Well, he gave that a nice run. He certainly did. He cut the three pin and went in between the two and the four and came back and knocked the four pin down. Well, it gives uh, team of Bob Mazer and Phil Clough a chance to climb back in. Down by 11, they'll cut into that lead with wherever Bob drops on this ball. Wants one more. That looked like it was going to be even worse than it turned out, but. And he spun the six pin around. Now he's just gonna play the wood in front of the six and see if he could snap it off the right side wall. Not to be but they'll reduce the lead down to three pins. Okay, I believe maybe it might even be two pins here. Let's see, no, three pins. Each team with 11 marks. And that indicates how close it is right now. Well, that was an interesting hit, kind of thin. <laughs> and he cleared the seven out. Seven, those seven pins out pretty fast, but as they started to fall, nothing touched the three, I mean the six, the nine, or the seven pins. Clip the wood and see what happens. Goes. Fine shot for Bob. Fine shot is wa right. Watch the ball. Ball actually hits the six pin into the nine. <laughs> Great shot by Bob Mazer and hello, Reggie. Wow. All of a sudden, it's catching. Everybody is punching through the center. Great effort. Oh, yes. he got it. it. What a great shot by Reggie DeLine. And it looked like the four and seven might both I, stay up. When he hit it, I said, that's a great effort, because I thought he had a chance. It went right between the four and the seven, and it clipped enough of the seven to tip it forward. Just the time factor. Oh, that's boy. a shame. That's a shame. There ought to be a law when you make a shot like that. An automatic, uh, automatic eight or nine kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the degree of difficulty. Oh, well, he works out of it with a 10. Well, 94 with the ball to come for Phil Clough. Final two frames of their second game. And you heard somebody say, chew. <laughs> Let me explain that. <laughs> That's when, in terminology of bowling, you're way off target, and you just want the best thing possible to happen. So you want each pin to chew on the other one to knock it down. <laughs> this may go. Come Let's back. see. Nope. Not yes. Oh, yes, it does go. Spare for Phil Clough. Well, Phil just can't miss, except for that one time. <laughs> Well, if it hit it anywhere but right on that red stripe, it probably wouldn't have gone, but just enough to top it over. And 
That's making a break count. Eight fill. No chew necessary there because that was right in the one three pocket. Through eight, the lead for Mazer and Clough is one pin. And there is another spare for Phil Clough. And he will stay up there to fill it, of course, in the 10th. This is incredible. Phil Clough has now rolled 10 boxes. Nine of them have been spares. And he throws seven more on that one for a 135 and a two string total of 302. Now the question is, will that be enough to be in the lead? That's pretty good when considering in the league a couple weeks ago I had 321 for three. <laughs> <laughs> You've just made a lot of league bowlers very happy by telling that story. <laughs> well, geez, if Dan Murphy can get 321. It happens. It's a great game. Really didn't enjoy it that much that night. Yeah, but greater, greater some days than <laughs> That's <others>. right. <laughs> <laughs> nice try by Bob Buxton. Almost converted the same spare that Reggie DeLine was able to knock down in the first game. A 3 6 4 7. It's a 9 box at a 110. And quickly the lead goes back to Bob Mazer and, and Phil Clough, leading by eight in the game and ten overall. And could be higher unless they can match the mark. Ooh. Well, they've matched the mark. They got a strike up there. Anything over seven, you would cut into that ten pin lead. Good ball by Bob Buxton. Bob lives in Merrimack, Mass, with his wife Bonnie. Bob works at AT&T, does most of his bowling at St. Joseph's in Haverhill. Oh, that's a double. Oh, double strike in the 10th again. Second game in a row that the team of Buxton and DeLine has thrown a double strike in the 10th. Wow. Well, they can regain the lead. It's incredible. 130 plus a ball. Anything over seven, they'll regain the lead. Oh, make it a triple. Three strikes in a row in the 10th for Bob Buxton and a 140 for the team. And how about those scores after two? <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a terrific finish. Don't go away, 305 to 302. We've got a game to go. Stay with us. Third game here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. What a match we've got going right now. Unbelievable, 305 to 302. <laughs> Reggie DeLine and his teammate Bob Buxton leading by three. Can you imagine if the triple strike and the double strike they finished the first and second games with, as another spare, were moved up in the game. Mm -hmm. Saw how many extra pins they could have had. Right. This course would be unbelievable. That's 16 marks now for the team of Buxton and DeLine. Eight fill on the spare. He'll shoot at the two and the four. It's going to be a shame to have to tell one of these teams that they lost with these scores. Reggie DeLine from Needham, Mass. Works at uh, General Mass Marketing Company. Does most of his bowling at the Fairway in Natick. Hanover Bowl in Hanover. And Reggie throws up 29, or rather 27 in the first two. Now, Phil Clough leading off the third game here for the team of Mazer and Clough, and this goes back to something we spoke about in earlier weeks here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. One of the little twists that we've thrown into this Scotch Doubles format, Dan, is that at the beginning of the third game, the teams can decide who is going to lead off. In other words, they can switch the order if they want to go with the hot bowler, and that is apparently what Phil Clough and Bob Mazer have elected to do as they decided that uh, Phil should start and end this game. Not a bad choice the way he's been bowling, that's for sure. Right back in the pocket. He hasn't had a strike yet, but he's had some great spares. And this will be a great one if he can convert the five, the seven, and the 10. And I'll tell you, today, nothing is sacred down there. You just expect each one of them to go. Let's see what he can do with the wood. Oh, it goes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is 10, box, 10 marks in 12 boxes for Phil Clough now. All of a sudden, great spares are becoming routine. <laughs> wow. Bob Buxton now. 
pulls it to the left. Four horsemen right, one, three, six, ten. He's got lots of help. If he's on the head pin and not too full, he should convert this. There it is. It just collapses down into the corner. That's 17 marks now for the team of DeLine and Buxton. Unless something very surprising and shocking happens here the rest of this third game, it looks like we'll have a double 400 series. How often does that happen in doubles competition? The way we're going, they're not going to be small 400s either. If you tuned in late, Buxton and DeLine with a 165 and then a 140. Mazer and Clough with a 167 and a 135. And Bob Buxton has to settle for the eight box in the fourth. Bob Mazer working on a spare in the second. It'll be a six fill. Through completed frames, the second, the lead is five for Buxton and DeLine. But Bob Mazur is opposite a spare here in the third, and he is really going to have to work to make this happen. A lot will depend on where that wood ends up. Yeah, his only chance, I guess, is to catch the wood and see what happens. Oh, oh my. Something like that? <laughs> wow, what a clinic. What a clinic. Some great shots by all four bowlers use this show as an instructional video. Absolutely. On the mark. Nine. So they gain two pins on the fill. I was about to say, with all the marks, it's, it's surprising we haven't got more strikes. But when I think back, uh, we've got five of them in two boxes. <laughs> <laughs> to shoot right at this 10 pin. He's got it. We will take a break. Three marks in a row for the team of Mazer and Clough. This match uh, is as close as it's been right from the start. High scores and very, very tight with six frames to go. There's lots more excitement. Don't go away. Stars and Strikes Devils continues in a minute. We have six frames to go in this one. And, uh, well, <laughs> we have at least six frames to go in this one, I should say. Well, another testy spare for Reggie. The, the two, the four, and the six. Piece of wood in between the two and the six. Uh, he's going to have to well, ideally cut the two pin over, but. Oh, he did it too well. Actually, maybe that the wood in between probably hurt him a little bit and threw the two pin in front of the six. Dan, I know you and I both want to take a minute here uh, to express our prayers and hopes for Peter Flynn as of when we are taping this edition of Stars and Strikes Doubles. Peter has uh, uh, been admitted to Methuen Hospital and uh, is having a tough go, and we certainly want to tell him and his family, his wife Debbie and their sons Sean and Craig that our thoughts are with them and uh, we're wishing him well. Uh, that uh, echoes my sentiments exactly, Doug. And of course, with our taping schedule, we hope by the time this show airs that Peter will be up and back on his feet. But our thoughts are with him and his, the entire Flynn family. Reggie DeLine knocks the single for a spare in the sixth. And Phil Clough will fill a spare in the fourth. Got to hurry with that one. You could see his follow through came around the side of him. He knew the ball was let go a little prematurely. He trying to fight it with body English to get it up there. And again, just a little late delivering that ball. 65. This match is dead even. Five boxes to go. Incredible match. <laughs> Incredible match. 
one of the most exciting matches that uh, in our years we've been involved with as far as tightness in the in the size of the score it's just incredible and the fact that it's mixed uh, mixed doubles I should <laughs> men's doubles and it but it's a scotch doubles format Dan, this is the best match we've had in the entire five-week history of uh, <laughs> Stars and Strikes doubles. This is amazing. Yeah. Phil trying to cover the four pin. Now he's been late with his delivery a couple times and missing to the right. He's not missing that time, though. As soon as he let the ball go, I'm almost directly behind him. I knew he got the ball out in the lane a little better than the last few boxes, and they matched the mark put it up already by Buxton in the line. So. We're going down to the last four frames, dead even, both working on marks. 18 marks for each team so far. Neither team wants to flinch now. Well, off target, but let's see. Not a bad drop for a seven on the spare and a makeable spare. The one, the six, and the seven, and he's got some help in between. I guess if there was a problem pin, it might be the seven. Missed it. Hold it to the left. Here, Reggie, get the sticks. In other words, every ball counts now. Get as many as you can. Well, problem wasn't the seven, it was a six. Now, one more box. Assuming we don't have a tie, Bob Buxton's day will be completed. Looks good. Oh, big strike. Well, that is the seventh strike for the team. You see the replay, no doubt about that one. Big ball for Bob Mazur on the spare. Just misses the head pin to the left. So he gets six. So that, that was opposite an open frame. One, three, six, ten. That's four horsemen to the right. Then he'll have to contend with the strike already up. Looks good. A uh, little heavy. We've received word, by the way, Dan, that uh, Owen Martin and John Mafio have won that one string roll off that was going on simultaneously to our taping this show. So uh, Owen Martin and John Mafio will be the number two seed. And. Uh, Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc, the team they defeated in that roll-off, will be the number three seeds, and they'll be here next week. And Bob Mazur leaving the six pin. It's a one-pin advantage for Buxton and DeLine. They have a strike in the eighth. This will be a spare if Bob can convert this. And we're going to go one pin apart, the final two frames. Both teams working on a mark. The advantage, of course, to DeLine working on the strike. He has two balls in his fill. Final two frames. What a nail-biter. It's really a shame that one of these teams is going to have to be eliminated after this because we have seen tr some tremendous bowling here by all four bowlers. Again, this is the strike fill. It'll be an eight. 106 through eight. They're already over 400. Both teams over 400 already. And that'll give the lead, or uh, I should say lead temporarily anyways, a nine pin lead for Buxton and DeLine. And to force them to get another mark, Reggie would have to get one. Well, what yep. happened? This is the last frame. They used to get strikes. <laughs> <laughs> that close to one, though. And I'll tell you, that four pin looks mighty tiny down there. Ooh, oh, and he, he went just by. pulled it to the left. Wow. Gave it a good run. Well, he just kind of picked that last ball up and threw it. That would have took a little extra time. That's an important pin right there. Yep. All right, 124 for a 429 for the team of Buxton and DeLine. That means that Mazur and Clough need 128. Well, he got a five, five fill. That means he's going to have to convert either this mark or have a mark in the 10th. Not that one. Phil Clough may win the prize for coming to us from the longest distance. Warren Mass, as Dan mentioned, way out in the western part of the state. Phil and his wife, Diane, have Three children, Eric, Quinton, and Deanna. Phil works at designer Warren Pumps, does a lot of his bowling at the State Bowl in Springfield, and it all comes down to this last box. Needs a mark. How about that, another four pin. Must convert this for the spare. Two would be a tie, spare two would be a tie, spare three would be a win. 
comes down He's to right this. On it. Right there, He's Phil right Clough. Well, how about that for the strategy paying off too? That's right. He for was the, the team. hot bowler. That's right. Clough and Mays are electing to have Phil Clough start and finish this third game. He needs three on it now to win. And he's thinking, give me one of those three the head pin and I'll take my chances. Uh oh. Well, he, he got it though. The head pin, but oh, he got oh, oh, whoops, my. make it a to it's correct a, that. It's seven on a spare, not six. So I'll correct that. So it's going to be 434 to 429. How about that for a match? First week of the series here on Star Strikes. First week. Oh, who knows what will happen after this. We'll come back and talk to the bowlers in a minute. Well, I hope you were here for the entire hour. That was some terrific bowling by these two teams. Our first week of this ladder series here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. We have three weeks still to come, so who knows what kind of scores we'll be seeing for those, but uh, this one was a dandy. In case uh, you missed that final score, we had a little problem with the computer there at the end, but uh, 434 for Bob Mazur and Phil Clough, a 132 final game, and Bob Buxton and Reggie DeLime with a 429 and still losing by five. That is incredible. Let's have a big round of applause for, first of all, Bob Buxton and Reggie DeLine. Fifth place uh, money just doesn't seem to be appropriate for you guys. You can uh, split those amongst yourselves, uh, splitting $150 for fifth place, and it just doesn't seem fair with a with a 429. You guys were uh, were really rolling. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's ever happened that you could throw a triple strike and a double strike in the same match and still not have enough. Uh, they just they just kept coming back at us, and uh, we were lucky to you know to do as well as we did with the strikes at the end, and uh, we stayed close, but fell through that last mark in the end, and. That did it. I got a feeling, Reggie, if you guys had bowled 10 strings against each other, it would have been the same thing. It would have been just oh, yeah. a few pins at the end. Oh, yeah, it would have been. But the only thing, if the triple strike was in the middle of the string, right. it would have been a higher score. Than, right. You know. But Phil was throwing a good ball today. That's right. And, of course, they made the, the change at the end to, uh, to get Phil up there more often in the final string, and it turned out to pay off. Yeah, they both came back with the marks when they had to. Both All of right. them. Well, we congratulate, we congratulate both of you for, uh, for getting here again, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Congratulations. Terrific bowling. Thanks, Walter. Yeah. All right. Bob Buxton and Reggie DeLine, thanks very much. And, uh, wow, frustrating to throw a great score like that and just not have enough. But uh, how about a round of applause also for our winners, Bob Mazur and Phil Clough. We'll bring them up, and of course, uh, <laughs> no checks for you guys yet, although you earned them, certainly. Why don't you guys turn around and face the camera here so we can get you both on. Uh, congratulations. Uh, that, that was a terrific match. Oh, it's great bowling, great bowling. I'm telling you, uh, we put a little strategy move and let Phil start the last string because he seemed to be really on, on fire, and uh, it paid off. Let's talk about that strategy a little bit, Phil, because that's something we have discussed here on the program. But you're you're the first team, I believe, to use it uh, to actually change the order going into that third game. But you must have felt comfortable today. Yeah, it was a Bob's suggestion, and I went along with it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, go, obviously, going into the tenth, you knew exactly what you needed, right? Yeah, I knew I needed the mark. A yeah. little, uh, little scary going after the single there, with uh, knowing that you got to have it. Yeah, I just clo <laughs> closed my eyes and threw the ball. <laughs> well, again, congratulations. Terrific score for you guys. And uh, I don't know if you heard while we were on the air, but uh, uh, Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc were the runners-up in that roll one-string roll-off. So they'll be your opponents next week. So we'll, we'll be looking for more of the same then. Congratulations to both of you guys. Terrific. Thanks very much. This applause is for you. And now uh, let's take a look at our ladder so that we can bring you up to date on what's happening. And we'll... Uh, give you again the information, uh, again, that one-string roll-off between Tom Martin and John Mafio on one side, and uh, or rather Owen Martin and John Mafio on one side, Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc on the other side, and Dan Murphy in, and you have the results. Right. Uh, they bowled a terrific game, a 101. <laughs> a 101. It was a tie. They bowled two extra frames, and uh, the team of Owen Martin and John Mafio won 20 to 19, although they did have a spare the last uh, uh, frame of this two box roll up right. but they didn't need to, to fill that spare so they won by a pin. All right so that uh, roll off result was reflected in the ladder that you just saw with the team of uh, Martin and Mafio taking the number two spot. As for the team of uh, Tom O'Brien and Glenn LeBlanc they are the number three seated team and they will join us next week to be the opponents for uh, Bob Mazur and Phil Clough who uh, have got to be feeling pretty good about things right now. Well they were here to watch um uh, Bob Mays and Phil Clough uh, roll that terrific score, both bowlers, uh, both teams. So um, they know what they have to do next week. All right, and we know what we have to do. We have to say goodbye. We hope you'll join us next Saturday, next Sunday, rather, at 12 noon. First for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and then at 1 for Stars and Strikes doubles. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew, Doug Brown, so long, everybody, from Park Place Lanes.